20, which I'll show you what that means if you're new to crocheting, um, but you can adjust this. This will determine the length. So it'll be the middle, this center line is what we're about to do. And that determines the length of your finished project. So if you're making um, one for a child, you would want a smaller one. If you're making one for someone with a larger head, you might want to do more stitches. And it'll also depend on the weight of your yarn, how much you want to do. So I would just experiment. These really don't take very long. So you can kind of play around with what seems to work best, measure it up against the masks that you have, depending on how long those straps are, and just see what works for you. I've been doing about 20 chains. So to do a chain, you just wrap your yarn over your hook, and then you use the hook to pull that yarn that you've wrapped over through the little loop that was already on your hook. And that's one chain. So I'm gonna do that again. So I'm wrapping around my hook and then pulling that through. That's two. And when, as you go, you're gonna get faster and faster at this. So again, you kind of wrap around from the right side. If you're right-handed, you're gonna wrap around the right side of the hook and then you're gonna pull that through. Oops. My cat has found her scratching post. <laughs> and if you lose count, you can just count the number of little, um, little notches that you see here. So one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I believe that is 20. So again, you can kind of see this was also 20. So you can see this is about what the finished length will be by the time we're all said and done. This really determines about what you're gonna end up with because that's about the length of the finished project. So the rest of the project uses a stitch called the half double crochet, um, which is a really nice and easy stitch that takes up a lot of space. So it's really quick to crochet with. So to get started, you're gonna find the third chain in from where you are. So the third chain to the left of your hook. So you're gonna go backwards. So I'm gonna count that out by looking at those little bumps. So one, two, three. And at the third little, um, they look like little V's. So at the third little V, that's where I'm going to put my hook in. But first I am going to, for a half double crochet, I'm going to wrap my yarn around my hook once. So again, same way you did when you were going to chain, but then you're going to put that into the third little V from the right side and you're going to press that in you're going to do you're going to wrap that yarn around your hook again and pull it through the v 
And then you're gonna wrap your yarn around your hook again. And you're gonna pull that through three, all three of the loops that are on your hook. And that is a half double crochet. So the reason that we start a little bit further in is so that you don't end up, um, because this has some height to it, if you went straight into the one that you were just at, it would kind of like squish it into a little triangle on the end, which doesn't look particularly nice. So those two chains that we skipped give you space to turn your crochet project. So we're just gonna keep doing that. So this time we don't have to skip anything because we're not trying to turn the project around. We're already at the height that we wanna work at. So this time we can just wrap this yarn around our hook and go directly into the next little V here. So then now I'm gonna wrap my yarn again, once I'm into the V, pull that through once and then wrap again and pull that through all three loops on my hook. So I'm only left with one. And I'm just gonna keep doing that the whole way to the end of this. So I'm gonna do it uh, 17 times. Yes, 18 times. I skipped two. So yarn over into your chain, pull it through, yarn over through your stitches. And if you're just tuning in or just looking at the video now, um, I, my name's Christy and I'm a librarian at the Public Library of Brookline. And we've been running this idea space craft along program um, with the help of the folks over at BIG where we bring some of the projects that we would normally do at the library into everybody's houses with the help of the internet and public TV. And this week we're making these little ear savers as they call them. So if you've seen photos online of folks who have to wear masks a lot because of their jobs, whether they're nurses or healthcare workers, or they are working in grocery stores and have to wear a mask all day, um, those can get really, really uncomfortable to wear over the backs of their ears for a long time. You can end up with marks if you're doing that like all day, every day. Um, I'm sure we all know how uncomfortable it can be to wear a mask even just around Brookline right now all the time and to wear it for hours and hours and hours at a time is much more uncomfortable. So this is just the simplest little gadget that's a little more comfortable that will turn your ear loops into a back of the head loop. So it'll have little buttons on the sides for you to hook onto. If you don't know how to crochet, you could do this exact same thing with just a stretchy piece of fabric that you stitch together on the edges so it doesn't fray. You could do it with a piece of t-shirt as well if you wanted to. Anything that's washable so um, I'm not using nice, beautiful wool yarn. I'm using um, just 
regular old acrylic yarn that I had sitting around so that it can go through the washing machine and still hold up. And I don't have to worry about shrinkage. So it is actually an advantage if you can't afford the fancier yarn for this um, because it'll probably be easier for you to wash it to make sure. So if you have someone who might want them, you could make them a few because they're so quick for each day of the week so that they could run them through the laundry as they go. And they're teeny tiny, so they're really easy to launder as well. Hey, Christy, it's Will. Hi, um, Will. I just wanted to uh, say thank you so much for um, all your work on the ear savers so far with the crocheting. That is crocheting, right? It is crocheting. Awesome. Um, so we may have a guest here with us. We just were running into a few technical difficulties. Um, we may have Tiffany, who's one of our cataloging librarians, um, join with us. Tiffany, are you on the call with us right now? I am. Are you able to hear me? Yes, that sounds very good. Thank oh, you, you sound wonderful now, Tiffany. Okay, great. <laughs> That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Tiffany. I am I'm the one of the catalogers. And I crochet and I knit and I do every kind of needlework and dabble in just about anything crafty. That was beautiful timing because my cat was begging to be let out <laughs> of this room. <laughs> that is awesome. And you know how to knit, which I do not. Um, which is very exciting. So you might even, if we have time today, be able to show us a little bit of how you would knit one of these, because it's the same concept, it's just a different tool. Yep. I can definitely do that. And I have, I have knitting needles, but I don't know that I can, I have knit before, but I've not knit in a very long time, and I never quite got the hang of it. <laughs> when I learned. So I don't know if I can remember enough to follow along. The pattern looks pretty, pretty simple, but I have been working on, have you been doing any like fabric, any like textile stuff at home while you're not in the library right now? Um, mostly I have been doing um, cross stitch. Ooh, so, what are you yeah. cross stitching? Um, I'm cross stitching a series of leaves. Neat. Are you traveling. doing just like a, like to be framed? Or are you doing it on something? Um, no, I, right now I'm just doing it on the um, cross stitch cloth and it's three and they're pretty small. Um, and so I'm gonna um, frame them and mount them together. That's awesome. I really like cross stitching, but I always yeah. forget how long it takes. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm finishing up some projects. Yeah, no, I totally <laughs> did that. I finished all of the projects that had been like sitting for months <laughs> in my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> I had only done some really simple crochet projects before, like kind of at this level, but I <laughs> ordered a bunch of yarn and started a blanket a couple weeks ago and I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Those definitely take time. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing a granny square blanket with like 10 different granny squares in it so mm -hmm. that I don't get bored of one of the patterns because yeah. I need to like have constant changing yarns because if I have to do the same thing <laughs> a thousand times I will not finish it. <laughs> yeah. When you're I crocheted a blanket for my dad and I used extra 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 thick yarn and it still took like a month <laughs> yes yes that is how I was like if I ever did this I would have to get that arm yarn yeah <laughs> and just knit with your arms if you haven't seen these they're amazing and wonderful yep. um and it's just yarn that's like the thickness of your arm and you just use that to knit a giant blanket. And so you only have like 50 stitches for the whole blanket. Right. Which is great. So yeah. I came to the end of this 
little chain series that I had done. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to half double crochet two more times into this final chain as a way to turn this piece around so that I can go back onto the other side. So what we're actually going to end up doing is just half double crocheting on both sides of this chain. So I did my first one just like I had normally been doing, but I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to put my hook back into the same part, the same chain two more times. And you'll probably have a little, you have your little tail. And I like to just kind of work around this so that it ends up getting kind of woven in as I go so that I don't have that sticking out. I don't have to worry about weaving it in later. I'll just kind of grab it with the yarn um, and you can kind of play around with exactly how to do that. Um, just quickly here. And I've immediately forgotten how many I've done. So I'm looking at it to count out. So you should have two little loops around your, um, the piece of the chain you're working on per stitch. So I see four loops. So that means I need one more on this. So we all know my camera's not that good, but you can kind of see that it's ending up kind of rounded. And then now I'm gonna go down this side doing the exact same thing. I'm just going to grab the other half of that V and do the same exact stitch the whole way around until I reach the end here. So I'm going to get started doing that. And because we're just going around once, it's like a really natural, easy way to go. You don't have to worry about chains or anything like that ever again on this project. It goes super fast and easy. So you just end up with this like little half circle looking thing on the end, which is a perfect place for your button when you finish. And you'll just keep on going. So hey, it's Will again. And hey, Will. I'm curious, do you have a, um, do you know anything about the history of uh, crocheting and knitting and did they like develop like independently of one another? Yes, yes they did. I am so grateful that you know the answer to that question, <laughs> Tiffany, because I have no idea what the answer to that question is. Please answer it. I'm very interested. Yeah, so crochet is actually older than knitting. Um, wait, sorry, no. They, in, they developed independently. Knitting is older than crocheting. Um, crocheting um, dates back to um, the like 18th century is when a lot of that started to come through. Um, and most doilies, for example, are crocheted. So if you think of like, you know, the Victorian household with like the doilies on all the chairs. Um, and then knitting is older um, because there's evidence of knitting um, in like sort of um, very old history, like um, med medieval times, there's evidence that there was actual knitting. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine being like, I'm gonna go say hi to the sheep and then I'm gonna just like, twirl around this fluff I got off of it a lot <laughs> until it makes a string. Yep. Um, and you know, uh, they used to spin the yarn with um, a rock and a string um, and a, a little stick. Um, so that was like the precursor to, um, uh, you know, a spinning wheel and things like that. But 
yeah, they're really cool looking. I have no idea how they work, but. Yeah, it always makes me appreciate how much, like why it would be so, it would be such a sign of like wealth that you would be able to afford lots of clothes and stuff yeah. because yeah, if I had to have all of my clothes hand knit or hand woven, <laughs> <laughs> they would be pretty pricey. Yep. And actually, um, so I follow some uh, costume historians on YouTube because why not? Um, and apparently cutting curved fabric didn't start until about the 14th century. Before that, everything was made with square or rectangles and, um, you know, uh, what are they called? Uh, the, where they sew the pieces at an angle um, so they fold the corners over to sew. Um, but yeah, they didn't actually have like curved cutting techniques. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I guess scissors, fabric scissors are <laughs> a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. Yep. I cannot imagine. Yeah. So I'm Clothing coming. was very expensive. I'm coming to the very end. So because we did, if you can remember that we did three into this one, I've already done one on this very end. So I'm just going to do two so that there's three total on this end and three total on this end, three stitches in that last chain here. And I'm gonna pull out a little loop for myself. And just snip the end here. And then I'm just gonna feed this little snipped end through this to make a knot. And then I'm just gonna weave that using my hook, just kind of hide it in here and it is really nice i realized especially if you're like getting started color change yarn is kind of nice because it makes it easier to see which part is your original chain because it'll be literally a different color um than whatever you're working with yeah by the if, end if you're a beginner black yarn is just about the worst thing you can use to learn on it is impossible to see your stitches unless you're familiar with what they look like. I used, when I was learning to knit, and this is maybe tells you why I did not yeah. learn to knit, I got a whole bunch of that super thin, super fluffy yarn because I was in middle school and I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And you couldn't see any of the stitches at all. <laughs> But you also couldn't see the giant holes in it because it covered them. So yeah. it kind of net neutral worked <laughs> out. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, it's the job done. Yeah. Everybody's first stuff has holes in it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh my I actually learned after the fir my first like four years of, litting, li of knitting that I had actually been doing the cast on that I was supposed to be doing wrong. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know what I did wrong knitting. Someday I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it back up and I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. But today's today I'm just working on my cushioning. <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah. I feel like I can't keep both I can't do both at the same time. I have to like do one and then move <laughs> on and do the other. Yeah, I definitely go through phases where I do one more than the other. Um, so sometimes I'll be, um, you know, doing, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get my cat gone. Okay. Um, I'll be, you know, like really into making like doilies um, or, you know, scarves or like little frilly things. And then sometimes I'm like, I want to make a fancy knit scarf or I want to make a large amount of washcloth. And then I knit. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I'm just grabbing some thread and some buttons and my needle because I'm all set. I have a little strip of crocheted material basically, which again, like you could recreate that using whatever you have around. So if you don't crochet or knit and you're like, you know, I'll, I'll pick that up another time, but today is not that day. You can still have an ear saver. <laughs> So I have a bunch of different kinds of buttons, but you want like roughly, I think about that size, like your kind of standard size button, maybe a little bit bigger. The teeny tiny ones are gonna be trickier to loop your um, mask straps onto. And I just totally guesstimate the center and run my needle through the yarn I don't tie it off until I've, so I run it through the button, run it back through the button and through the fabric. And then I literally just knot it on. So it's not even like really, it's not like sewing, sewing. You're just using the needle to get it through. So you could get away without a needle if you can just kind of work your yarn or whatever through the button and through the fabric, the fabric that you've made. And I'm just doing a regular knot. There's nothing fancy here. And you might want to run it a couple of times through if you're worried about um, it holding up in the wash. Um, but then I'm all set. And I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. Um, Tiffany, I don't know how long your knitting one takes. Did you want to try and do one or get started on one? Um, yeah, we can do that. Um, if you're an experienced knitter, it won't take long at all. Um, if you're starting out or you're like a medium, medium sort of knitter, um, it might take a little longer, but it's a fairly simple pattern. So I think you could probably even make it simpler. Like this yeah. one had a little bit of like tapered edges. Mine's literally just a rectangle. And I feel like you could probably do the same thing. Yeah, you definitely could do it without shaping. So, yeah. So and I what? don't have any buttons. So it's done the same way as this, but. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of um, yarn and needles are you going to use? Um, so it calls for worsted weight yarn. Um, and it's just sort of, you know, like not too small, not too big. Um, the, and then I have um, a, a recycled cotton yarn that has been sitting around. So really any yarn that you have sitting around. Um, and... Uh, I'm using size eight needles, um, but I also tend to um, knit true to gauge. So it doesn't like it actually winds up being the same size with the same. It matches the pattern exactly, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, but if you know you knit tight, then you can size up to a nine. And if you know you knit big, you can size down to a seven. Mine's all finished. Pretty. <laughs> awesome. So I think Will can switch the camera over to you so that we can see more what you're doing. Because I will like see if I can follow along, but I will probably <laughs> fail because I do have knitting needles. But I have not knit in like eight <laughs> years, I think. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull up the pattern. Um, and I have, oh, these are size 10, which might actually be better because my yarn is not worse to weight at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have 
these beautiful new idea space knitting needles that you'll be able to check out of the library at some point in the future. That's fun. And does when I'm casting on, does it work the same way as when I crochet cast on? So you can do it that way. You can, um, there's a whole bunch of ways you can um, cast on. I tend to use what's called the long tail cast on just because it's the sturdiest. Um, because with some of the other yarns, it uh, it's made that way so they can stretch a lot easier um, or you can use them to like um, shape things more. Whereas, um, uh yeah um so the straight or the long tail cast on just is a good all-purpose um log or sorry <laughs> i was using my computer earlier today um but it's a like a really good sturdy way to um where'd my needles go um <laughs> uh, a really sturdy way to like start your project so and it's a lot easier to keep it um, lined up the way you need to so it doesn't curve or, um, you know, go in or out. It just kind of stays straighter better. So I still don't have the camera. Um, let's see if I can. Okay, so I don't have a good table space to use. So I'm just gonna be holding it up in front of me. So hopefully that works pretty well. Um, now I tend to use circular needles, but this is just my preference because regular needle knitting needles can get a little long. And if I'm working on a small project, this is better for me. But I don't recommend this if you're just starting out. <laughs> it gets very weird and you have to, because it's connected in the middle. Um, so for a long tail cast on, um, all right, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to get to the beginning of the yarn. That's always the problem, isn't it? Um, so for a long tail cast on, you're going to make a little slip knot. So wrap around my finger, pull the yarn through the loop. Um, and then you're gonna put the loop on your needle. Not too tight, but definitely um, not loose. Um, so then you take the piece of yarn that is longer and you wrap it around your finger. So that way um, it looks like this. And then you take the other yarn and you, um, hold on just one second. I wanna make sure I'm, describing it right because like I know how to do it it's just um, <laughs> yeah. you know I want to make sure that I tell you the right like which piece of yarn goes on which finger because I have I usually have to remind myself even when I knit a lot because it's just one of those things <laughs> okay so yes so you take the yarn around your thumb and then you take the, um, the long piece that's still attached to your, um, your ball of yarn and you, okay, let's see if I can turn a little bit. So you take um, your yarn under the yarn here and then you, um, uh, hold on, wait a minute, all right, <laughs> I have to do this facing me one time. Um, okay, so. All right, so you have the long piece of yarn wrapped around your thumb and you have the um, the, uh, the piece of yarn that's connected to the needle. Um, it's called the running end, um, but so you have them wrapped around your fingers like this. So this right here is the, the um, part that it has an ending 
And this right here is the part that is attached to the yarn. Okay, and then you go under the thumb and under the, um, the running yarn, and then you pull it tight, but not too tight. Um, so I don't know if you're able to see that. At you're all. over to. There we yeah, go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a new camera or a new phone, so I'm still kind of learning where the camera is. Um, so it looks like um, you have. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to switch back up. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so you count the the um, the slip stitch as a stitch. So right now I have three stitches on the needle, and then you repeat again. So through and under and through. That's four stitches, um, and they will have this little um, bar running down the bottom um, and you want to make sure that that stays straight like so that it doesn't get twisted around um, and then so here is under over pull and um, how many how many stitches am i casting on um you are casting on uh where is that like it's okay. like four or five, five? Uh, yeah, um, it is cast on four stitches. Four. Oh, way too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Four. I got very excited. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you want, we can do the simple version, which would just be a little rectangle with no shaping. Um, that would probably go the fastest. Yeah, why don't we why don't we try that? Because we had some those technical difficulties at the end, and yeah. maybe I will be able to do it if it is only one <laughs> stitch. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> All right. So once you've cast on, what we're going to do is um, we're going to um, do what's called stockinette stitching, which means you do the knit stitch on this side, and then when you flip it, you do the knit 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 stitch again um, and then it'll look like um, rows of little bumpy stripes um, it won't look like like the, it, it won't look like a sock um, but it will look like kind of a ridge and then a, like a part out and then a ridge and then a part out um, so to knit <laughs> okay listen so what you're going to do is you're going to take the piece that's still attached here, and you want to make sure that um, you're going to bring it on this side. So you're going to want the um, the long tail to be on the left, and then you take your needle and you. Um, and this is my empty needle, right? So I'm holding. Yes. I'm holding in my left hand. Yes. The needle with all of the threads on it. Yes. Great. And um, yeah, and so the um, the long end, the running end, um, is going to be on your right. And so you're going to. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can adjust this a little bit um, to make it a little easier for you to see. Um, okay. So you take your needle and you put it through the front of the stitch. So you know every stitch. Um, has the the front is the the part of the stitch you see when you're holding it towards you the, part the back that's closest to me mm -hmm. yes the back is the part that's um away from you most of the time for a lot of projects you won't need to use the back at all so <laughs> um so yeah so you stitch or you um place the needle through and then you're going to take your right hand and wrap the yarn around um, and so you're going to come around the needle, over the needle, and then you're going to pull that through underneath. And then you slide the stitch to the other needle. Um, so is that, 
so I'm I'm going over. Am I going over the needle that's closest to me, or the needle that is in my right hand or in my left hand? That's okay, so it. you're gonna go over the the needle in your left hand. So over you will take the needle in my left hand. Yeah. So you take the um. Uh, you know what, this is going to be too small, but we're going to try it anyway, because I, <laughs> <laughs> I changed the, um, the, the what, oh, I, I started with the cast on from the, um, from a different pattern before we decided to do just a short one. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so yeah, um, but that's fine. You'll get a good idea here. Um, okay, so, all right. So now that you have that, that's a stitch. And you'll see over the, so there's the loop that's, <laughs> there's the loop that's on this, the needle. And then there's this little bump underneath. Um, if you can see that. Um, and then, so what you're gonna do now is repeat that. Um, so you're gonna go take your right needle under the front of the stitch on the left needle. Sometimes it takes a little working, don't worry about it, you know. Um, especially if you tend to cast on tightly. Um, okay, so we've got the needle through the front loop on the left needle. And so you wrap the needle. Um, okay. So, sorry, this is really hard to do without like a setup. Um, okay, so you wrap the needle or the yarn behind the needle on your left hand, and then you pull it through with your right hand, and then you slide it off onto the right hand needle. Oh, you know what I never did? I never slid it off. That is why that was not <laughs> going well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see what I am failing to do okay um and then you do the same thing with the third stitch so you reach it underneath like i said sometimes you have to like wiggle it and um and then you um wrap the yarn and pull it through and now you have three stitches and you pull it off the loop. And then, so the final stitch on here, um, you're gonna go through the front and then you're gonna go behind the left needle and, and around. And then you're going to pull the yarn through the front loop and then you're gonna slip it off the needle. So what you'll have is all of the, um, all of the stitches and the long piece of yarn will be on the front here. So this is the long piece of yarn right here. This is the short piece of yarn. Um, you can actually cut this um, if you prefer to work with a smaller bit of yarn there. Um, so, and the yarn that, or the, the side that you're working on um, the first time is called, so when the yarn is on your, left needle that is the right side and when it's on the left or on the right needle it is the right side no i said that wrong uh so we'll just say um so right side on the left needle left or right needle is wrong side okay there we go um and that just means that um it's less important with a stitch like this, but like if you're looking at socks, um, the right side is the side that faces out and the wrong side is the, song, the side, the part that faces in. Um, so if a recipe or, I'm just not talking well today, am I? <laughs> uh, so if a pattern calls for you to keep track of the right side and the left side, one of the things, little tricks that I tend to do so I don't actually have to pay much attention is that I will put, um, a stitch holder or some sort of like a paper clip or a safety pin or something through um, the the last hoop on the right side. And then when I, so I know that if 
the, this, um, the little stitch marker is at the end, it's the right side. And if it's at the front, then it's the wrong side. So I just find that that's usually easier. <laughs> um, or like, you know, you can keep track of it by like the long tail is on the right side, the running stitch is on the left side. So there are a lot of little ways that you can um, make it easier to remember some stuff. Um, okay, so um, now, so we have everything on the right needle and you're gonna take the right needle and put it in your left hand and the long stitch or the long, um, the long tail is gonna be on the left again and the running stitch is gonna be on the right. So this is always how it's going to wind up working um, when you're on the right side. And when you're on the wrong side, um, it'll be the uh, this part. So you can see here um, that this is um, the right side um, because the, yeah, am I saying that right? All right, let me start over with that. Okay. so. If the long tail is on the left side, um, that is the right side. And if the long tail is on um, the front, it is on the, so if it's like this, where the long side is on the front, that is the wrong side. Um, so once you've switched um, your needle to your left hand and made sure that you know, you, um, you've got the long tail on the back, then you, just start again. So you take your front needle and you put it through and you wrap it around the back and then bring it through the front and then slide it off. So we got one um, through the front, wrap around, pull through. Um, one thing that you, um, want to be careful of is um, you're allowed to move the stitches here closer or further to make it easier to slip the needle on, um, but you just wanna make sure that um, you try not to slide it off. It's fixable if you do, but it's not fun. Um, and so we're just gonna finish up this row here. So slip through the front, wrap around the back, through the front hoop, slide off and then through the front, wrap around the back. I didn't catch the yarn, that also happens. <laughs> um, so um, if, if you find that there's nothing coming through, just wrap the yarn again, because um, sometimes you can miss the, especially if you're moving quickly, you can accidentally not wrap the yarn or whatever. So, um, but so yep around the back, through the front. Nope, I messed up, don't do that. Um, so that is row two. Um, uh, usually, um, what am I trying to say? Usually most um, patterns start with um, the cast on row and then it starts counting. So you don't count the cast on row in most patterns. Um, and then if you look at the front now, um, it's not the, there's actually um, the, instead of there being a bump on each stitch, there's actually a V underneath. Um, so that will tell you how many, um, how many stitches you've actually made. So, um, so the biggest difference, so we're, we're coming up on the end, but mm -hmm. you're basically, you would just continue to do that and you would just keep turning Yep. and you, instead of working, I worked sort of horizontally around a center, you're working right. from like the left side to the right side or the right side to the left side of your like long. So you're working from the, sh from the short end to your next short end all the way right. down. Yes. And you would yeah. end up though with basically the same thing. And we'll post the full patterns um, so you mm -hmm. can take a look too. Um, yeah. And there are fancy ways you can end it. Um, 
or finish a project, or you can just knit to the end of the row and um, come here and you can, um, essentially you could just tie a knot here. Um, you can uh, do some, um, a stitch called their cast off stitches, which make the ends neater. But if you just wanna get through a rectangle, you don't have to get fancy. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just, I have one of our masks ready here so that I can give it a try. We'll see how my sizing was. <laughs> oh yeah, that totally works. And now I don't have it stuck to my ears. So that just goes around the back and these hooked into here. And it is a lot more comfortable. I wasn't sure if it would actually be that much more comfortable. It is a lot more comfortable. <laughs> Wear it that way. So there you go. Yeah. And um, you can, um, I'm sorry, I just lost my place again. Um, um, oh, the using this um, stock or this uh, garter stitch, which is the knitting on each side. Um, mm -hmm. The, it should actually be not super stretchy, but it will have some stretch. Oh, but nice. It should, yeah, it should be pretty sturdy, but it's so it's not like, you know, clamped together, but it's also not gonna be like. Yeah, absolutely. So Tiffany, thank you so much. I'm sorry we didn't get to finish knitting yours. Um, <laughs> I also did not successfully knit anything, but that's okay. Cause I can yeah. try again another time. <laughs> I realized that I was still just crocheting, but just with knitting needles, which is a bad way to crochet and a worse way to knit. Um, so that went well. So thank you so much for joining me um, sure. and for showing us sort of an alternative way to get um, the same sort of result. Um, next week, we'll be doing a little um, paint along. We're gonna have another librarian um, Jessica, who's from the reference department, who works in, with our archive, she's going to come and show us how to sort of turn found nature objects into little tiny pieces of art. Um, so I'm going to be, I'm going to co-host that one because she's going to lead it. So I'm going to be crafting along with her and she's going to show us some ideas for that. Um, and thanks again for Big for hosting us um, and for working with us on this project. Um, and we'll be back again next Thursday at 4 p.m. Thanks so much. Bye, thank you.